Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Yan Yu, founder of the Calgary Guide to Understanding Disease. For those new to these videos, welcome to the Calgary Guide video series. For returning viewers, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the pathogenesis of asthma. Before we begin, a reminder that you can help support us in our work by liking the video just as it's starting out and by subscribing to my channel. And with that, let's get started. Asthma is defined as a disease involving airway hyperresponsiveness, causing variable and reversible airflow obstruction. It's caused by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Genetic factors could include HLAG mutations or other genetic issues causing defects in bronchial airway epithelium. Environmental factors include excessive hygiene, fewer siblings, and antibiotics within the first two years of life. All of these factors combine to result in atypy, which is a predisposition to allergic hypersensitivity in the airways. In a patient with a predisposition to atypy, if they're then subsequently exposed to triggers that sensitize the helper T cells, they could develop asthma. And these triggers of airway hyperresponsiveness include upper respiratory tract infections, URTIs, allergens such as pollen, animal dander, dust, mold, air pollution, cigarette smoke, and other chemicals in the air, drugs such as aspirin, NSAIDs like ibuprofen, and beta blockers, cold air, and exercise. Exposure to these triggers could sensitize helper T cells, which then stimulate B cells to produce IgE antibodies, which in turn binds to mast cells. The activated helper T cells and IgE sensitized mast cells now line the airways of the lungs. Once the patient is exposed to triggers a second time, the pathogenesis of asthma begins, involving an early response for the first two hours and a delayed response for the fourth to the twelfth hour after exposure. In terms of the early response after exposure, allergens cross-link IgE antibodies on the mast cells, triggering these mast cells to release histamines, leukotrienes, and other inflammatory mediators. These mediators cause vasodilation, which lead to edema of the interstitial lung tissue. They trigger goblet cell hyperplasia, which increase mucus secretion in the airways. And finally, they trigger bronchial smooth muscle contraction. All of these factors lead to airway obstruction, which is a component of asthma. Now, the delayed response, which again happens between the 4th to the 12th hour after exposure to the trigger, this response involves activated mast cells and helper T cells releasing cytokines that then induce the maturation of granular white blood cells such as eosinophils. The eosinophils migrate into the airways, causing bronchial constriction, to the eyes, causing conjunctivitis, and to the nose, causing rhinitis. The bronchial constriction, in addition to the airway obstruction, are components of asthma. The conjunctivitis and rhinitis are associated complications. And that's it, everybody. Thanks for your attention. Again, if you have any thoughts about what slide topic I should do next, or if you have any questions or feedback, please pop it in the comments. And also, please support us in our work by liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Thanks, everybody. See you in the next video.